this is how we built our commercial style aluminum floating dock. We start off with a little bit of sketching and conceptual drawings, just a basic idea of how we're going to do it. Once we have our sketches together, then we'll calculate how much materials we're going to need and we'll go pick up all the materials. We'll put the two first um, cross braces in. Once those are in, we can square everything up. Once it's square, then we can put our the rest of the cross is in according to how the float layout is going to be. So we've already figured out our float layout for this and the floats come in easy to work with measurements like 24 inches, 48 inches. So we know where we're going to put everything. Once we get all the crosses laid out, then we put the diagonals in. The diagonals will help keep everything stiff and strong and straight. Once that's done, put the floats on first or put the um, furring strips on. It doesn't really matter. So in this case, I did a little bit of both. I put one float on, I put some of the furring strips on, I, I put the sides on, I started to deck this thing out. Now I'm gonna hang the last float and finish up the decking. Okay, first thing I gotta do is put a plug in here. These floats come with uh, vent plugs removed. Okay, now that we got it up into place, we'll grab our hardware, half inch stainless, and we'll just bolt it to the pre-drilled holes. Grab a tapper. So this is the this is the uh, cutoff wheel I use. I just try to find the thinnest ones that I can find. It's just an abrasive cutoff. You can put a five inch on a four and a half inch grinder, and uh, you just be careful. Like I only use this much from about here to here. I see people cutting like this all the time, and that'll make the thing come come back at you. And I've seen guys actually injure themselves like that so I prefer to cut it like this and and you have way more control of the uh, of the tool and then I don't want to get this too hot so I'm just gonna you don't want to force this thing you don't want to push push into this because that'll eat up your wheel real fast it's better if you let the rpms you, you let this thing drive as fast as it can and just finesse it a lot of the stuff I do it takes me a long time I take my time because I, I finesse everything. So for example, like I'll, I'll cut right in here like this and I'll let the, if you hear the grinder um, speed, like if you hear it straining, you're putting too much pressure. If you're throwing dust and everything at you, it's too much pressure. You just gotta lightly go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll, I'll start with this one. And I'm not gonna cut it all the way through cause then I could damage the float. So I'll, I'll probably cut it seven eighths of the way through and then I'll break break the rest of it off and then file file the burr. So here we go. Okay, so I'll grab a pair of pliers and I'll I'll break the rest of that off. And we'll just grab this guy and just waggle. Wiggle waggle. And that's all there is to it. Now I'll grab a little file and just file off that burr. Okay, so I just grabbed a pretty coarse file. This is like a, this is a Nichols. I, I get these at Home Depot, they're pretty cheap. And a lot of people, they don't understand how to use a file. It only cuts in one direction. So if, if you're gonna go 
go hard back and forth like you're, you're just working to twice as hard as you need to the file only cuts in one direction so you just doesn't take much there we go okay you're gonna plug in this furring strip right here and all it does is keep keep me from having to drill deck screws into this aluminum. That's what she looks like. And then the same thing right here, furring strip. So we can use our little decking screws. Furring strip, furring strip. There's the fastener right here. So it just goes faster. So I gotta make a cutout for the lid. I gotta leave a lip all the way around for the lid to this thing. So I'm leaving these long and then I'll just mark them and then cut them with the porta band. fits into this groove right here and locks it down into place. Here she's snug over here and snug over here and put it into position on the furring strip and then I don't lock it down totally yet. Make sure she's still straight and then this way I can still slide the next one in and then I'll snug it down after I slide the next one in. But I still have to measure and mark. So I just use this as a spacer, tap it in. And we'll see. Our next piece needs to be about at least 14 and a half. that's going to do it for this video thanks so much for watching the next video is going to be the part two to this one we're going to finish it up put some cleats on it and put a lid on it and then get it ready to ship and, and get it out of here so um, please stay tuned for that please like and subscribe leave a comment down below and uh, thanks so much for watching really appreciate it see you on the next one